welcome to this workshop on uh, sorry webinar on statistical disclosure control in the 2021 census we're joined by um, colleagues from ons today uh, sam trace will be presenting she's been in ons for three years working in statistical disclosure control and census outputs uh, prior to that, she worked in NHS Research Ethics, and she's also Vice Chair of the MRES Research Ethics at the University of Portsmouth. She does make a, a request for any researchers who'd like to present. So if you feel like you'd like to present to the on the course she's involved with, then um, on research ethics, then please contact her in the chat or uh, from the contact details at the end. Um, she's joined by Keith Spicer, who is the head of ONS Statistical Disclosure Control. He has a very long CV and has been involved in um, a lot of stuff. I'll put a link in the chat later on to his book on research ethics in um, surveys. And um, he was part of the original team that proposed um, the flexible table builder, which has become um, the custom customized data set, I think is the right way of describing it now. So he will be in the background and picking up any technical queries you have. So we'll go over to Sam now to present. Hi, thank, thank you, Nigel. Good morning, folks. Uh, actually, any, any kind of research you want to present at a, a, a RAS seminar um, to people from the ONS would be really welcome. So if you if you want to get in contact with, with that, that would be lovely. Right. So today we are on disclosure control for census 2021, making the census safe. So, um, obviously, as, as the gentleman said, please post in the Q&A, not the chat as I have it, um, as we go. Um, Keith may be answering some of those questions um, as, as we go through. I'm not sure how much time we'll have at the end, but uh, we'll see. I've said, making a sense, what does that actually mean? It means we can't identify people in the data or learn things about them that we didn't already know. And there are regulatory definitions of which bars we have to jump, depending on which piece of data we're talking about. But that, for, the, for general purposes, is our definition for today. <laughs> um, SDC methods for create a custom data set. That is a clickable link if you want to click through and take a look at. I'm sure, hopefully, you have already had a look at the create a custom data set tool. Uh, I'm a slightly invested in it, so I think it's amazing. But um, the um, how, how we got to being able to do automated disclosure control checks um, and what we put in there is the subject of this morning's talk. So we had to the STC methods. Now, the targeted record swapping, this is affecting the data that went into the um, system, identifying people and households and swapping them with a similar record in the local area. Uh, we, we are recording the session, um, Gargi. I, I don't know how, how we'll be distributing it afterwards, but it is currently recorded. And cell, cell key perturbation, that is adding slight noise to the figures and making slight changes to cell counts. And also we built in some rules to the table, which stop tables with many zeros, low counts in general terms being released. So when you're using the system, you, you will find that out. Uh, very quickly, uh, that some some areas will be refused if they don't meet certain criteria. So in detail, targeted swapping, any record could be swapped, but rare and more is more likely. Um, swapping stays in the vague local area. We swap between OAs or between MSOAs generally in the same local authority. There are a few local authority swaps, but um, it's not. It just is increasing the uncertainty over any identification. So the general principle, everyone who answers the census is still present, just not necessarily in the same place. So it's always worth filling out that form and getting your question. Well, as everyone has to fill out the census, um, but and, and it will be accounted somewhere and probably close to where it was, even if swapped. Cell key perturbation. This is where we make slight changes to the figures. Um, I think the, the method to go in a slightly more detail than it's on the slide is we attach a number to um, every single record and then we work out from those the numbers that are in a box a, a, a perturbation. So if you get the same numbers in the box, same records in a cell, you will always get the same perturbation level. Now, the, the purpose behind it is to 
adds uncertainty about any identification from a small count. So we do also perturb zeros. We have to do a different coding method to perturb zeros, which is quite tricky, but it does happen. It makes it harder to add up totals to work out the missing data. And this is just, just to prevent disclosure without making the data less useful. Access to C rules. So if a table has too few records, you won't be able to get it. And there are specific rules for communals, um, common establishments and households and individuals. You won't be able to get communal establishment data sets below MSOA within create custom data set. I think there's one which is residence type, and that is effectively, um, does this person live in a house or a common establishment? Yes, no, it's very simple. And those are the rules built into, yes, again, create a custom data set. So we, we don't want, the rules are designed to prevent attribute disclosure, that is finding things out about a person you didn't already know. Uh, too many low cell counts. Dominance, so um, if you have a whole bunch of one category that we, we couldn't allow you to guess that um, a person who did fit in that category simply because of the huge amount of dominance in that um, picture, uh, that would, would also be a potential fail. And building up a picture from repeat queries. So all of those are built in. Um, this does result in some slight oddities, and we've had plenty of user feedback on this already. But in brief, totals not adding up. So in this wonderful town of Hobbiton, if you do a table by age, you get a different total with, with the same town, the same residents counted by sex. But um, in different tables, you get different totals. So this is it, these results should be really slight and not cause any issue in terms of the validity of the research. Um, bearing in mind also that uh, you know the census produces estimates, not counts. I think that's an important point to bear in mind. Everyone likes a nice little sum that adds up exactly, but um, these are estimates and they should uh, it should be borne in mind that there is a slight margin of error and um, and especially in low level geography, if you, if you move things obviously up by one or or a very small amount, it might be add to that margin of error slightly, but it shouldn't be so significant in Hamstone research. It is just if we like things to add up neatly and we see take that the sign of having done things correctly, it, it is slightly um, irksome, but it does, on the other hand, protect the data, which is the good thing. Now, um, we've got things the rules protect against. So, for instance, how old is Ermintrude? Now, we can guess that the lovely Ermintrude is in milk, engaged in milk production as her main job. And so we, she, she must be, from this table, over 45. And we wonder how old is Danny? And Danny, Probably of these, he, well, well, let's stereotype him as a swim teacher. Why we would think a dolphin would do that, I'm not sure. But um, yes, he's got to be over 45 again. But Gertie, on the other hand, is 26. She must work in a baker shop from this table. Now, of course, we can't be certain about any of those conclusions because A, they might have been swapped. B, these figures may be perturbed, even though zeros may not be actual zeros. And See, there is error in the system as well. So some of these records could be imputed. Um, some, we don't know for certain that everyone filled out their form correctly. Um, and all of that adds doubt to these conclusions. Um, and you can see um, we do get low counts in the table. I did have one in there, but now there isn't after some editing. Um, um, we did ask, have a question about what, why there are ones, even in our low area tables, and that is simply because so long as there is doubt about whether they are genuine ones, that is OK. And um, another thing to notice, there are structural zeros left in the table. You cannot be 0 to 15 and have an industry because the census form doesn't ask you the industry question if you are if you're, it got, calculates your age as under 16. Um, also, also in the, doing those calculations, I made some assumptions. Um, I, I can't assume Danny is a swim teacher. Um, possibly Danny is a farmer. Who knows? Um, so there's some element of personal private or private knowledge required to make those assumptions. 
So yes, the table builder would probably su suppress this table. It's it's very sparse and there's attribute disclosures and all kinds of identification risk in this table. But one of the oddities of this, these rules are that if you gave a table with actually slightly more detail, you might get probably not in all areas, probably you'll get fewer areas in all likelihood, but you might get a table like this because in this one, if you ask how old is Ermintrude, she could be 45 to 64 and she could be 65 plus. We don't know because the numbers have been split bet between the two categories. And if you ask ourselves how old is Danny again, the numbers are split between the two categories. And um, if we ask ourselves if Gertie is 26, she, she could be a bread baker or she could be in bread sales rather than in being a bread shop worker generally. So because the category has been split into two different finds, we don't know where she might fit in that category. So sometimes puzzlingly, you will get a table with more detail. That kind of gives you a suggestion as to why. And, um, and again, there is still a lot of doubt about these conclusions because any of these figures could be perturbed. If you notice this total is different to the table above, that is because you may have different records in these. So uh, in the above table, oops, you only had two. And this one, you've got a total of three in the same columns. But we, do we know which table was perturbed? We don't. So we can't assume that this one reveal um, is, is right and the other one wrong or, or, or vice versa. We don't simply don't know. So after doing all of this, we did wonder, well, we, we put a lot of effort into making this um, safe. Is it actually? So we did do an intruder test. We assembled a team of intruders to um, check the data and see if they could try to identify people. We, we actually had 50 people sign up, uh, 26 took part. Most were unsuccessful. We actually had a number that did not put in any claims. They tried and tried and just they would go through the funnel of the system trying to identify someone and it, the system just would say no at the right point. And um, so it did confirm, however, there were risks with detailed classifications at low geography. I think I'm fine to say that because that is kind of um, going to, is what you would guess at initial. We, uh, we changed a very small number of outputs in response to that conclusion because obviously given the experience of my team, we'd already made judgments based upon that assumption. But it was nice to see it borne out by um, evidence, which is and an empirical study. And uh, we, what we did in the intruder test was to go in a little bit more detail. We allowed people to use the internet so they could use um, publicly available information. And that is you know, fulfilling the terms of the, the Statistical Regulation and Services Act 2007. Uh, we had to consider publicly available information rather than just privately obtained. And um, I think this also fulfills the EU data protection directive. An account should be taken of all the means likely reasonably to be either used by either the controller or by any other person to identify the said person. So anything reasonable, just an ordinary internet use, usage was fine for this test. And as I said, I hope to get a paper on it later um, next year, maybe. And um, it's already written. And yeah, if you're interested, I, I, by the time it's got that far, we might circulate. <laughs> so we also did, I've just covered the table builder. We also did a lot of tabular outputs. Now, these were the first, well, kind of the second thing is to come out after the um, initial results were table outputs, which are based on judgments. So considerations, we had all of these thoughts. We, we worked out frequency of the tables, that is how many ones, two, small counts, how much of any table would be tens or to have more than 10 people in, at, at, at various levels of geography. So we put a lot of thought depending on what the output was and um, look, looked at the counts and how much other considerations protected them, so imputation, swapping and perturbation, and then made judgments, talk, speaking with the um, other stakeholders, so, so the topic leads, um, topic experts in each category, and discussed the level of geography they wanted versus the level of detail they wanted in the classifications. And so 
that that's how we arrived at the already um, produced topic summaries that have been coming out and getting lots of pressure attention uh, so, so since January this year. And um, then we talk about microdata. Obviously, um, as UK DS users, you may be um, very familiar with these. We this is the record level data releases. There's actually quite a, a range. I did put a link into the, the policy for social survey microdata, which I read. I can, can pop that link in. Um, oh, it's going to take me off the screen. Um, that one. And, but we have a range of products which will be coming out. First will be the public file. This is a 1% sample for 20 variables and the region uh, geography is region level. Don't know why that's background. And the level of detail in the classifications is low. So risk level is low. I've got a little limbo man there because this, this should really not tell you anything about anyone. It, it needs to be absolutely, well, it's equally not very useful for research. It really is a teaching file just to get to used to, to using the variables and maybe using them in some software and um, teaching people to how to analyze data is the purpose of this file. Now, um, the safe code at household 1% is new for 2021 and region level geography and again, 60 ish variables. And I think this will be available through the UK DS and um, the risk level on these is medium. As you, I don't know if you can get that from the picture but I was looking for good pictures for medium level risk. I think this is, the purpose of this is if you, where, where we class things as medium, and I think Keith probably would have a more accurate definition than this, is where you can, it's, if you had private knowledge, you might be able to deduce something, but with public knowledge, you shouldn't be able to. Yeah, it's, uh, with a safeguard of data, you, you, you should not be able to identify somebody using the data plus, any information already in the public domain, but you might be able to identify somebody using uh, private knowledge, for example, if you knew somebody was in the data, which you won't in this case, or, or that if you had some private knowledge as to some of the some of the variables, some of the information about that person, but we don't have to take that into account, only to make it safeguarded rather than public. Thank you. Uh, oh, the mere fact that it's a uh... A sample also really helps with them um, because you can't be certain that any individual you might think of is in that sample. So um, and we're actually doing the work on this at the moment. The 5% region is safeguarded individual detailed variables. So there's a lot of detail in the classifications. So you might get, um, I don't know, um, a wide, more detail in terms of age ranges and 90-ish um, variables and there's a link to the 2011 code book and the risk level is medium. Uh, I do love the Billy Groats graph and of course middle size Billy Groats graph is where this one sits in terms of risk and so yeah the again you shouldn't be able to deduce anything using public knowledge from this and not not of course you everyone is signed up to not trying as well which is one of the major um, um, protections on the data sets. OK, we've got the individual 5% grouped local authority. So grouped local authority is a special um, geography, especially for this data set. And that is grouping up every local authority under 120K head of population. So that we did this for 2011 and the 2011 um, is book, code book is there for a guide. It is slightly different, unavoidably this time around, partly due to population increases and partly due to um, boundary changes. I, well, I don't think there's many boundary changes so much as there, there are a few that local authorities we did in 2011 that have exist, don't exist anymore in that form have changed name. So, um, but where possible, we try to make it the same as 2011 for comparative purposes. We're also hoping um, to get the geography available on the geo portal to make it easier to use. I can't confirm that at present, but we're hoping to do that. So risk level medium. So we've got middle sized elephant there. Now the secure individual 10%, obviously with 10%, it's a large sample size. There's a higher likelihood someone might be in there. Available through the integrated data service, which up, which is gradually is being built as we speak and um, possible to cross with loads of variables. And I, I find it just very exciting what they're doing. 
it will be linked to um, certain NHS outcomes, as well as um, I think births, marriages and deaths. Um, straight away, obviously, additional linkages will be possible um, as and when, uh, as per the applications that come in. Um, and 120 plus variables, actually it might be more than that. Um, and risk level obviously is high, which is why it is very protected. And, and there will, will be processes to go through to judge applications. Now, um, secure household, 10%. Again, available for the integrated data service, and um, uh, we've, we're hoping that this will be the first application to be maybe next year uh, to get this data out. And nearly 200 data plus variables. Yeah, there will be documentation once the data set is released. Um, and again, there's a 2011 link for a guide. You should be able to click through on your end, and. Again, possible to cross-reference with a really wide range of other data variables. This is very exciting data. And um, although, yeah, again, the risk level like this giraffe is high. Then we go to the secure 100%. Note, justifying the need for this data must justify proof of major policy impact. And again, the this will be both household and individual. And again, it's not a sample. It's, it's everything or nearly, I should say, nearly everything. And um, this is the highest risk data that we would allow out. But again, the, the protections therefore come not by anything we've done to the data particularly, but from the situation in which it is held. So in considerations, the user need for what we put into each data set. We have just done the stakeholder. Um, I, th I think Nigel as well has put in on, on the stakeholder um, engagement that we did. Uh, right detail for the right data set because you know, there's quite a range of data sets there and what's appropriate for each, what constitutes high level classifications, what, what is less detail. And we are also going to intruder test it. So this will be a smaller scale ex exercise. We will get some people to try and find things out from the data once the data set is generated. And um, there, there will be some other additional pr protections in, in place. Um, but um, we, we try as much as possible to do um, the bare minimum with this data. It's, it's all about choosing the um, the classifications, choosing the variables and getting the geography in place and then allowing the setting to maintain the safety of the data. OK, that concludes the talk. <laughs>